Welcome to day three of my Linux gaming experiment. Today we're gonna to be tackling the big stuff, the stuff that you all were most interested in seeing, which is Steam Play, or Steam on Linux, Steam for Linux, Steam Play on Linux. I don't exactly know what the official word is called, but Proton, <laughs> the Proton involvement. And we're gonna play a lot of different games, see how they work, show you the update process. It's actually a lot easier than most of the stuff we tackled so far, which is why I was kind of saving it because this is the easy stuff at this point, but we're gonna be tackling that. But first, I need to get rid of this mop on my head. So, it's gonna be gone in three, two. All right, much better. Now we gotta do something about this beard. Hmm. Okay, good enough for now. Now that I've successfully Benjamin buttoned my way from the 50 year old chain smoker look to a 15 year old boy look, I'm feeling good. Let's play some games. Check out this Lucio figure I got. Target had them on clearance for 74 cents. They didn't have any other Overwatch characters, but they had a lot of Lucios for some reason. As a Lucio main, I was pretty excited. 74 cents is a steal for any sort of figure, game related, especially for a relatively recent game. Pretty sick if you ask me. All right, it's time to tackle Steam. To get Steam rolling, of course, download it from your software manager in your distribution. I just search Steam and Software Boutique, hit install, type in your password, tell it to install the package. You're good to go. Sign in to Steam and then load it up and you can go on and install Linux compatible games that are on the store. Like a lot of my library is already Linux compatible natively, but to install Windows games, you'll need to go to Steam settings, uh, go down to where it says beta updates, uh, currently, you know, it's on none, so you want to go down to the Proton Beta Update or the Proton Update. There's two different ones. Obviously, one is going to be more experimental than the other. I, I just kind of went with the basic Steam Proton Update, tell it to restart Steam. It will have to reload thing, things, install the client update, and then it will show you a list. Go ahead and double check in your settings again to make sure that it's enabled. But then you can also check the checkbox now to say Enable Steam Play for all titles, which means not just the ones that they've already deemed to be fully compatible, but literally all of your Steam games, you can try to force it through there. I also went ahead and upgraded to the beta version of Proton just for fun. You may need to experiment depending on what is or isn't working for you. Again, let it reload, and then now you will, you pretty much have an option to install any software or game in your Steam library, and it will attempt to wrap it up in the Proton package. So I am now installing Skyrim Special Edition first, and we're gonna go through some of the games. I have a massive library, I can't test them all, but some of the games I think I would wanna play if I were getting this up and running with Steam Play. And we're just gonna run through them. Just for funsies, I thought I'd try and see if Wallpaper Engine would work. Since running Steam games adds icons to the desktop and Wine seems to translate desktop interaction fairly well, I thought I'd give it a shot, but nope. Nope. Another question that I had received that I wanted to test that I found to be very important was importing an existing Steam download library from another hard drive or external drive, uh, particularly your Windows Steam library. So I had to figure out what the mount drive, you know, what the mount location for my internal hard drive that I use on Windows is, and then I added it as a Steam library like you normally would in Steam on Windows, and it populated the list with like a hundred something games that I had installed on Windows. The problem is, it then wanted to download massive updates for every single game. And for some of them, it just got caught in a loop where it'd say, it, like Path of Exile, kept saying it was downloading an update and it would download the 12 gig update and then just start all over. And it just kept giving me that issue over and over. And I never really got any of those games running from that library. And having to basically re-download the entire game as an update kind of defeats the purpose because this would be valuable to those with data caps or with very low internet speed, wishing to not have to re-download their games, whereas this has something to download for all of them. I never got this working. I wound up unmounting that drive and not messing it with it anymore because I did not get any of those games working properly and it just kept trying to download updates over and over. And then when I went back to Windows, it needed to re-download updates for all of those games on Windows too. So I don't entirely recommend it unless it's like a one-time move. However, Alex from Low Spec Gamer uh, said he has a Steam library on an external hard drive and got it to work in his testing with Steam Play. 
just fine as far as his testing could tell thus far, so it might be hit or miss. You know, sometimes there are some things more important to appreciate than video games. But that being said, it is time to test our games. Now, I've been taking notes of the games that have or haven't worked. I've installed a crap ton, but I, I wound up not testing them all. However, I've tested quite a few, and we're going to run through them here right now. Call of Duty 4. It works. It has some weird stutter issue in terms of like frame pacing on my 144Hz panel, but that didn't seem to come through very much on the capture, making me think it's just a sub 144Hz match, since Call of Duty 4 doesn't actually have a refresh rate lock. Black Ops 1 did not work on Steam, but did eventually work through Lutris using Wine Steam. However, there was no sound. It should be clear at this point why I actually started showing Lutris before I showed Steam Play, because so many entries thus far are they don't work with the native Steam thing, but they do work with Lutris. So I got I got a lot of flack for that in the last video. It's like, why'd you start with this? This is more advanced. You should show Steam. It works right away. Not so much. Uh, but it's also not perfect when it works in Lutris either, because Black Ops didn't have audio. Black Ops 3 did not work at all. Now, Doom 2016 only gives me a black screen with a flickering UI, and you would think with one of the games that they launched fairly certain that it worked. Let me get away from the flickering 144 hertz there. With one of the ones that they seem certain would have worked, you would have think it might have, but I tried switching between both Proton beta builds available, and all I'm getting is a black screen, so... I don't know. Darksiders 2 Definitive Edition does work, but again, felt kind of choppy, even though it was a high frame rate, so maybe some bad timings there. Dirt 3 did not work at all on Steam nor Lutris. At that point, I was just like, done with Lutris. Actually, it did work after a reboot. I wound up rebooting, except despite the fact that the Lutris page says Platinum, it works flawlessly without any tweaks. Something's wrong with the geometry rendering there. Devil May Cry, DMC Devil May Cry did not work at all. It just cuts to the desktop as soon as you tell it to run. Dragon Ball Fighter Z launched the game, but again, solid black screen, couldn't get out of it. Just had to force quit it, tried a few different times, didn't work. DuckTales does work. At this point, I realized that my controllers are not working. I have like four or five controllers I tested with this, and that was one of the big things I was excited for, was that Valve was touting much more controller support here. And I had two Xbox One wired controllers, a wired generic PS3 controller, or PS4 rather, and a wired generic Logitech controller from like early 2000s, none of them worked. None of them were detected by Steam, none of them worked in game. I'm pretty frustrated. But DuckTales did work. Dusk did work, but the mouse was acting really weird. Um, and that, that seems to be common with games that have worked, is that the mouse input sometimes gets a little funky, but it did work, it did run great. Uh, Fable Anniversary did not work, it just goes straight back to the desktop whenever you try to tell it to run, nothing actually happens. Uh, Gauntlet, the 2014 reboot, uh, similar thing, it just goes to the desktop. Halo uh, Spartan Strike plays the intros, plays all of the intros in full screen and windowed mode, but as soon as it finishes the intro and has to actually like render game menus, crashes to the desktop. Nothing, no error, just it's gone. Gotham City Imposters free to play. I was very surprised to see there's still people playing that game. I might have to get back to it sometimes. Uh, the first time I ran it, it crashed to the desktop as soon as it tried to actually get in the game. It let me, like, matchmake and everything, but once it tried getting into the game, it crashed. But then the second time, it actually got me in the game, but my mouse wasn't working at all. It worked fine in the menus, but in terms of first-person control, it, I had to use the arrow keys to look around, and then I had no way of shooting. I have no clue what happened, but the mouse was just weird. Homefront would not launch at all. Killing Floor 2 did work, seemed to run really good. But again, I had some weird mouse stuff where my mouse would just stop turning at some points and then suddenly it'd turn way too fast and it'd look up and down. It, something's weird with the Proton with the mouse inputs, but the game ran. And then lastly, I gave up on testing after this point. Magicka Wizard World uh, couldn't connect to Anti-Cheat and therefore could not run. And that was an issue already discussed, was that some games with DRM, there would be issues with. So I think it's probably conclusion time for day three. The Steam Play Day. The technology is getting there. The update is pretty cool. When games do work, and they work well, it's really cool. Getting to play like full rounds of Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, which is one of my favorite multiplayer shooters of all time, and it just work. Like, no problems other than the occasional like hitch, which may be more texture prefetch stuff. 
it was really cool and that ran great and it was a near native experience but that was a DirectX 9 game the other games when they ran like DuckTales and Killing Floor like when they were working right freaking awesome I don't have a clue why none of my controllers were being I don't think they were even being detected by the operating system I tried generic Logitech ones official Xbox One that should be detected automatically. I could never get the guide buttons to light up. Nevertheless, actual input. Steam wouldn't detect the input. I enabled support for, in Steam for uh, Xbox, PlayStation, and generic controllers. It never detected anything being plugged in, and that was a big problem for actually controlling a couple of the games, because they would be normally controller controlled. Weird way of putting it. Um, <laughs> so that was pretty frustrating, and it was, it was going to become way too tedious and take up too much time for me to test every single game that didn't work with Steam Play with uh, Lutris. But I, it's one of those things, I started the day where I was gung-ho, yay, we're going to play Steam games on Linux, and it's going to be awesome, to getting kind of frustrated that so many games weren't working. But the fact that there's so many are close means that we're getting there. It means that we have, we're have we certainly further along than we were last time I looked into Linux gaming like as a serious option. And the fact that some of them are probably going to work fine on Lutris using Wine Steam instead of Steam Play for now is another bonus. Like There were a few that I tested that did work that way, so you could translate over. Still good to go. And the fact that some of them are little fixes that people will fix up over time and we're getting there. So... There's still some native games to test. There's a lot of native games on Steam. In fact, some of the ones I downloaded to test on Windows, I didn't notice that the little box saying this will launch via Steam Play wasn't there and that the game is actually native. There's quite a few native games. All, all the Valve ones, of course, but then weird ones like Insurgency and City Skylines and stuff like that all have native Linux versions. And so those are the Linux versions that are running. So that's going to be pretty cool to tackle in the next episode. But I am a little disappointed. I am disappointed that so many games had problems and it wasn't even like I would I guess that would be more frustrating to other people but I would be fine if there were issues like the weird geometry rendering in Dirt 3 obviously that made the game unplayable but that's ever you know that that's something that needs tweaked and then it probably works whereas games that literally just won't launch at all all the ones that just said running and then closed themselves without anything ever opening those are the ones I don't know what's going on with and more people you know are who are more in depth with actually developing that stuff than I am will be able to figure that out and in time but at this point in time I tried like 20 games and only got to play a small handful so pretty bummed about that but I have already been testing some of the native Linux games and been having a lot of fun with them and I am super stoked to show you guys that so that will be in day four which was probably going to be the finalish part to this mini series for a little bit um, as I wrap this up and we will come back to it at various points in time or if I have little things to focus on uh, but yeah, thank you so much for watching the episode and the series if you enjoyed hit the like button subscribe for more awesome tech content like this uh, And go check out the first two episodes if you missed them already been getting great support on them. I really appreciate it. I'll see you next time